So your weather station's installed. Now what? How do you take the observation data from your weather station in order to turn it into something useful? Stick around and find out as in this episode we take an in-depth look at data loggers and even an option that doesn't require the use of your console. A data logger is a device that connects directly to your weather console and provides an interface in which to get direct access to your weather station's observational data. The data loggers that we'll be discussing are the 6510, both the serial and USB variants, the 6540 streaming logger for APRS, the 6544 for alarm output, the 6550 for emergency response teams, the 6555 IP data logger, and the 6560 for irrigation control. Now we're going to cover one more device, the 6100. Now this device, while functionally is a data logger, you'll see that when we begin our discussion, it doesn't actually connect to your weather console, but rather directly to your ISS, in much the same way that the console connects to the ISS. Let's begin our discussion with the 6510. Now I have the most experience with this data logger because it's the USB variant that I use on my weather station. First, let's talk support. The 6510 is currently supported by Davis. Cost. Now this is going to vary depending on where you purchase your data logger. But online, I've seen the prices anywhere between $125 and $175. As we mentioned before, the 6510 is available in both serial and USB variants. And of course, both variants work with the WeatherLink software. Now because we're using WeatherLink to store our observations locally, this means all the data that you have is going to be stored on your local system. Lastly, Using the 6510, you can upload your observations to WeatherLink Live using the latest release of the WeatherLink software. Now let's talk about the 6540 streaming data logger. This is for use with the streaming data utility that gets installed when you install your WeatherLink software. Now the purpose is to allow you to broadcast your observational data through the APRS network. Now stay tuned later because we're going to discuss APRS and your weather station in a later video. The support status of the 6540. Unfortunately, this one has been discontinued by Davis. Cost. Now, again, it's going to be variable depending on where you purchase your data logger, but I've seen prices ranging from $116 to $158. Now, this does require the use of a serial port, but you can use a USB port if you use a serial to USB adapter. Now this is intended to be used with the streaming data utility, which is included as part of your WeatherLink installation. In order to use the 6540 to broadcast your observations across the APRS network, you must be a licensed amateur radio operator. And finally, there's additional equipment that you'll have to purchase and additional setup that you'll have to do in order to get this working. Now for the 6544 logger. This is also a streaming logger that's used for alarm output. Now, I don't have any personal experience with this and I've not talked to anybody who has used this before. So the information that I have is information that I've gathered in preparation for this video. Support for the 6544. This product, unfortunately, was discontinued. Now, I'm not aware of any other product that's taken its place, so it looks like this type of functionality is just being phased out. Cost. Even though this product was discontinued, you're still going to be able to find it online. So, I was able to find it on a few different sites, and the prices range from about $135 to $193. Like the 6540, the 6544 requires a serial port, and you can also use a USB port if you have a serial to USB adapter. 
Also like the 6540, the 6544 uses the streaming data utility. Now that's included within your Weatherlink installation. And finally, this data logger was designed to be an electrical interface to an electrical device, meaning that you can set certain thresholds to fire and when they do, you can control other electrical devices. Next is the 6550 data logger. This device was intended to be used with the Cameo software developed by the EPA and NOAA. Support status for the 6550. Unfortunately, this one has been discontinued as well. Cost. Again, even though it's discontinued, you're going to be able to find it for sale online. I was able to find it for around $195. The 6550 provides the real-time weather data needed for various emergency situations. Finally, the 6550 is for use with the Cameo software, which was developed by NOAA and the EPA. The next device is the 6555 IP data logger. This data logger is similar in functionality to the 6510s. It'll connect directly to your weather console. However, instead of plugging into your computer, it's going to plug into the network. You'll then use the WeatherLink software to configure a TCP IP connection in order to download the observational data. From there, it's the same as the 6510s. You can either store your data locally or use it to upload your data to the WeatherLink live service. Support for the 6555. Now, this product has been discontinued. Cost. Just like the other products we've talked about, even though it has been discontinued, you're going to be able to find it online. I found it on several sites with prices ranging anywhere between $200 and $235. Now the next two points I kind of want to talk about together because they're very similar. So the 6555 connects to your console and then directly to your network. So it's similar in functionality to the 6510s in that you'll still have to have a computer and that computer will still have to be running WeatherLink. The difference is the 6555 connects to your network and configures as a TCP IP device as your 6510s connect either through a serial port or a USB port and it'll configure that way through the software. The next data logger we're going to discuss is the 6560. This data logger is for use with irrigation systems, allowing you to control the most common irrigation systems, turning them on and off based on certain weather criteria. Support status. The 6560 has been discontinued. Cost. Not to sound like a broken record, but product's been discontinued, you're still going to be able to find it for sale online. I was able to find this device for about $195. Just like some of the other data loggers, the 6560 does require a serial port, or you can use a USB port with a serial to USB adapter. And finally, the 6560 is used to control irrigation systems based on evapotranspiration. I just hope I pronounced that right. And finally, the last device we're going to take a look at is the 6100 WeatherLink Live. Now, as I was making this video, I was debating whether we should call this one a data logger or not, because technically in the sense of the others that connect to your console and the PC, this one really doesn't. It configures the same way as the console does. You'll connect directly to your ISS, and then you'll configure it through a mobile app to connect to WeatherLink Live. Support status. The 6100 is a supported device. Cost. Depending on where you purchase it, it's going to run you between $180 and $250. The 6100 supports both wireless and wired connectivity. Configuration of the 6100 is done through a mobile app. The 6100 connects to the ISS in the same way as the console, by setting transmitter IDs. Since it communicates directly to the ISS, the 6100 doesn't require the WeatherLink software or a PC. And finally, I wanted to touch on WeatherLink Live just a little bit. 
That service will give you access to your observation data through a website, but there's also some other options that you have. It gives you access to your data through an API and even gives you the possibility of accessing your data through an Alexa skill. I wanted to leave you with a final thought. Now we discussed Weatherlink Live and how it gives you the opportunity to store your observations in the cloud, gives you easy access through a website, and even has some of the more advanced features like accessing your data through an API or maybe even accessing it through an Alexa skill. I wanted to tell you though that if you have the skills to do it and you have those observations, you could build all this stuff out on your own. For instance, I've built an application that stores these observations in a SQL database. I present that data on my website using an API and I've even built an Alexa skill. And I kind of wanted to do a little bit of a show and tell to kind of demonstrate my Alexa skill. Alexa, open Hoosier Weather. Welcome to Hoosier Weather. You can ask questions such as, what are the current conditions? How much rain did we get yesterday? Or what is the daily summary for July 4th, 2015? You can also get help by asking, what can I ask you? Or just say help. Alexa, ask Hoosier Weather, what is the current temperature? On Sunday, March, 1 2020 at 10:32 p.m. The temperature is 58.4 degrees Fahrenheit with a humidity of 51%. The barometric pressure is 29.863. I'll mute that so it doesn't show up in the video anymore. But I just wanted to show you that you can do some cool things with this data. So, sky's the limit, guys. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the little bell. That way you receive the notifications each time that we release a new video. I'm Mike, KD9BLW73.